With that, uh, let me, of course, uh, go right back across to some more guests uh, that are joining us on the broadcast. I'm being joined by uh, Jordan Cope, who's the Qatari Fellow at the Middle East Forum. Jordan, thank you so much for speaking to us. I want to begin by asking you, do you think the Puerto Rican vote is going to be a significant factor in deciding who will win in the swing states? This is a big question right now. I think yes. obviously as elections get nearer and nearer, both parties tend to always try to find crises to create in order to mine critical votes for each other's political party. I think the Puerto Rican vote where it's going to count most is where the populations really are at the largest, which of course is in Florida, a state that is very much predicted to vote for Trump, um, perhaps in some other states in the Northeast as well. Uh, such as New York, where there's a strong Puerto Rican concentration. New York, of course, will probably vote Democrat as it has in recent elections. There is a somewhat sizable population in Pennsylvania, I believe approximately 90,000. The question is, is that going to be such a substantial difference maker in this critical swing state? I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. And it should be noted that Puerto Rico, even though it's a U.S. entity itself, does not play a role overall in the electoral college and how the final outcome will be determined. Okay. Um, what will matter is the Puerto Rican are the Puerto Rican voters in the United States who can vote in presidential elections, but the impact will remain determined. Okay. Jordan, how do you view the Democrats then attacking Donald Trump? They've called him a fascist, they've called him a Nazi, they've called him a racist. Do you feel that it's uh, creating any impact on the voter? I think it's totally fine to criticize a presidential candidate, whether on one, one party or the other. But I think such characterizations are unhealthy to the fabric of our democracy which ultimately depends on the free exchange of ideas and ultimately truth. And when people decide to distort or abuse the truth, they not only bear impact on the current elections in a negative manner, but also discredit the suffering that millions underwent in World War II. And as a Jew, personally myself, I can't stand hearing when people make Hitler comparisons to one political candidate or the other. It denigrates the suffering of the, uh, of the victims of the Holocaust. Um, it's tremendously not useful nor productive to understanding some of the worst atrocities that ever happened in history. Um, and it's important that as Americans that it's totally fine to criticize each other's candidate, but we must remain tactful and united as a country in doing so and understand that at the end of the day we're all in this together. Um, and we have to be as accurate as possible when making one of the most important decisions that will impact our future for years to come. Jordan, do you think then somewhere Trump's immigration policy could be resonating with the vo voters? Is that uh, what you're picking up from the ground? I think for many Americans right now, with inflation through the roof and illegal immigration at an apparently all-time high, I believe approximately 11 million illegal immigrants and documented migrants uh, have moved to America under the Biden administration. Um, it is a very serious concern to, to many Americans who are underemployed, um, who are struggling to put food on the table and to find jobs that um, ultimately they can uh, benefit from at a level comparable to the professional experience that they have. Uh, I do think immigration has been pulled to have been one of the top factors um, of concerned voters in, in this current election. Uh, I do think it will sway many and many in, in some current swing states such as Arizona and Nevada might be impacted. Uh, many working class Americans in the Midwest such as Wisconsin, Ohio and Pennsylvania and these pivotal swing states might be affected less by immigration, more so by economics, mm -hmm. but many would argue that they go hand in hand. All right, talking about the economy, Jordan, um, Trump's tariff plan on imports versus Kamala Harris's policy to increase the wealth tax, uh, what really, in your perspective, will be more beneficial to the American economy? It, it's definitely a, a tricky question. I would argue that Trump's t uh, tariff plan probably would impact America more positively if I had to choose from 
from both of which. Um, generally, many would econo economists would support a more laissez-faire free market style economy overall. However, many Americans also realize that unfortunately some countries uh, such as China have currency and trade controls um, that adversely impact uh, trade with the United States. And, and many Americans feel that they have been disadvantaged by tariffs, um, whether it be um, with China, uh, excuse me, China imposing um, unfair trade practices against the US. Um, some, many Americans believe uh, Mexico, with some of its former trade practices towards the US through NAFTA, were, were not beneficial to the United States. Um, I can only see, unfortunately, a wealth tax um, undermining industry in America. Uh, many of our businesses have moved overseas for better or for worse, uh, but ultimately that impacts the American economy and job prospects significantly. So it's important for America to be able to retain its jobs uh, as the leader of the free democratic world. Um, at, at least many, many would agree with that statement. Um, it's important that America is able to retain its jobs to ensure that its population uh, maintains jobs that are not only in number, um, but those that correspond with professional experience. Um, so I would argue that unfortunately Harris's wealth tax uh, will unfortunately undermine America's economic prospects, job prospects, um, and America probably should be concerned. Okay, Jordan, I also want to bring in your perspective on abortion, which has been another major stickler as far as this particular election is concerned. Do you somewhere feel that majority of American women may end up backing Kamala Harris for her pro-abortion uh, position? I don't think so much abortion is the number one polling matter that is the top of most Americans' minds. It is something of, of very much importance. Uh, what, by what I've seen, it tends to be economics and immigration. Uh, I would imagine inflation up there as well. Um, when it comes to most American women, I'm not quite sure how they will vote in the ballot box. Um, but it should be reminded to audience members that in the United States, the president himself does not have the direct say over abortion. What the president in the United States has, according to his role, is authority over foreign policy and the ability to make executive orders um, which implement the law that's already in place. And so when it comes to abortion, that's a right that the Supreme Court has effectively ruled is reserved for the states to determine at the state level. Um, not for the president, not for the federal level in so as much. Um, and so it might be an important matter for voters, but it won't actually impact the realities on the ground. Okay, John, before we let you go, one last question. Uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, whose foreign policy will benefit America more? If it's just merely alone on foreign policy, it seems that many upon many Americans would probably align more so with Trump over Harris. Uh, the Biden administration, of which Harris is a part of, has caused a huge stir, especially with Muslim voters in the United States, which while only comprising approximately 1% of the US general population, um, very much play an important role in the swing state of Michigan, a, a pivotal state. Uh, many are upset with the ongoing war in the Middle East. Uh, many in that community would blame the Harris administration, the Biden administration, um, and will be voting for a third party candidate instead in Michigan, Wisconsin and Arizona, all critical swing states. Um, many Jewish Americans are, are quite undecided how to vote. Uh, many unfortunately, uh, excuse me, uh, many believe that the unfortunate consequences um, of the war and the intensifying anti-Semitism in the United States um, will cause probably many to, to vote uh, less so for the Democratic candidate than they have um, in recent years, although still supporting the Democratic uh, candidate Harris at large. And so foreign policy, I've written an article uh, previously about the current administration's policies in the Middle East, um, basically predicting uh, all the consequences that have now occurred. Um, and the devastation of the decision to undesignate the Houthis, to flirt with Iran and trying to restore a JCPOA nuclear deal. 
uh, in restoring aid, unfortunately, to Palestinian government agencies, um, which appear to have been correlated to sponsorship of terrorism. So this ongoing middle, uh, war in the Middle East um, certainly is likely attributable um, to, to U.S. policy, um, and it is my hope that whoever governs the United States in the next um, administration will better understand the consequences of actions uh, that America can make, especially um, in the Middle East and ultimately through the Middle East to the greater world. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.